I typed in action pose in my Google search and just and found this cool little action pose. So I'm going to use this as an example today. Um, so last video I talked about the uh, the stick figure, you know, and just to recap, started with the uh, head and then the body line. shoulder line the hip line and as usual I'm drawing too large Now notice I'm not doing uh, measurements like I did last time. However, I'm going to check myself in a minute. Uh, I'm just getting things roughed in uh, rather quickly just to keep the energy high and keep it fun. Plus it's a good way to test, test myself as well. I know I've got a few things off, but I'll get those fixed here in just a second. Uh, shoulder line is quite off. I could tell that my shoulder line was off when I was trying to draw in this upper arm here because I knew it was going up like this and when I put it up it was perfectly aligned with the shoulder line and I knew that if this was going up I knew the shoulder line needed to be tilted down more so I know my shoulder line is not quite correct. Um, I tried to place it because I see that it runs through the bottom half of the face, right through here, through the jaw. So I took a visual note of that. Um, so let's just maybe bring it more through like this. This lower, lower, uh, lower arm, I was not even close. Uh, there's a munching sound going on. My dog Lenny is over here chewing on a bone. All right, let's check the leg. That's not bad. As far as measurements go, I could check my measurements. Let's see, uh, I'm just gonna take a measurement. Let's zoom in a bit, just so I can get a little more room for error the larger it is. So here's a head measurement from the chin down. It's just above her belly button, and then from the belly button. So almost two heads down to the bottom of the crotch. So I'll check mine. One head, there's another head. What did we say? That was just above the belly button, so I'm going to say the belly button's like right there. And then we'll say the bottom of the crotch is somewhere right in there. So this is pretty good. This works for me. Let's check the um, length of the leg. Let me just double check. Uh, I'll probably make her legs a little longer. Just because that's kind of the thing to do when doing comic books characters make the legs a little longer give them a little more hero type proportions so her head just above the knee so almost three heads on the leg let me just see what mine's looking like One, two, so mine's pretty close. So I'll probably make, 
I'll, I'll extend that as I draw it. But anyway, so I have a, I have a basic uh, stick figure here. So now what I want to talk about is the, the next step, fleshing this out. So I'm going to make a, let's uh, knock the opacity down on this. Let's make a new layer, get a different color. Fleshing this out with shapes. So I've talked about using cylinders. I like using cylinders. There's uh, there's some things we need to uh, pay attention to as far as an anatomy goes and as how limbs are structured. Let's let's just start with each body part and just kind of analyze it a little bit. So let's start with the thigh. Notice that the thigh is wider at the top and then it tapers down as it gets to the knee. So this is a very good shape to remember when you're doing your thighs. Make it wider at the top as it comes into the pelvis region and have it taper down and get skinnier as it goes to the knee. Now the knee, you can keep very simple. You know, whether you just rough in a circle to represent the knee um, or if you just want uh, a, a simple um, uniform cylinder or a box, the knee doesn't have to taper. You know, if you have a section for the knee area, it doesn't need to taper. Thigh, yes, taper. Uh, when you get to the lower leg, definitely taper down at the ankle. Have it skinnier down at the ankle. And then right up here at the top is where it's fattest and then it comes in, connects like this. So almost like a bowling pin. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's fatter up at the top. So you can use this shape. Um, it's basically a modified cylinder. You know, if you have a cylinder, it's easier to manage a shape like a cylinder uh, in 3D space to manipulate it, manipulate it, rotate it around. You can just use a cylinder and then as you get more comfortable with uh, putting in your rough shapes, then you could maybe start to expand it a little bit, make it a little fatter up here and then bring it in like this. So whatever, whatever is comfortable for you, you can just do a cylinder for now because all we're doing is just roughing in the shapes. It's helped creating some mass to our form. So it helps to get, um, I know I started describing these, these shapes right off the bat. I'm not going to put them in yet because it actually helps to get the torso area in first. Once you get that all in, then put attach the limbs to it. So with a torso... Um, the big thing is the rib cage. You know, I can actually see the bottom of her ribs right here. But the, the rib cage is um, almost like an egg, almost like an egg shape. And it's going to come around here like this. So sometimes it helps to put that in first. The center line is going to go right at the center of the crotch through the belly button and then it's going to come right up through the center of the chest and then that's going to come right up into her neck and right into her head and connect to the back of her head. We haven't really talked about the neck and the head connection a whole lot. So if you have um, the head like this, the the spine connects right here, right at the base of the skull, just behind just behind the jaw. So right in this area right here is where the uh, spine connects. So that's, that's good to know. That's going to help you place, place things better. So 
that's the spine right there. So be aware of that. We've got the rib cage here and then the pelvis area, you know, simplifying that. I'm basically just trying to get the shape in with as few lines as possible. And this kind of curves up here like this, and then this curves in here like this. So that's the torso on this particular pose. So you can kind of see what it looks like there. Now you'll see a lot of um, tutorials and um, books on drawing comic figures, and they focus a lot on creating this shape. So this was one method. The other method that you'll see a lot is imagine it like a, um, almost like a bag of grain, like a burlap sack. You know, so it can it can pinch as it bends and stretch on the other side. Um, so learning to draw this, this is helpful. So here I've already got a little guide for my lower pelvis region. Um, I could rough this in. Again, being a little wider at the bottom, it's almost like a uh, if you have this um, spherical elliptical shape like an egg and its major axis is this way on the pelvis region you can imagine that it's a similar shape but its major axis is going this way so if you think about that as you're uh, creating this shape that might that might be helpful I don't want to come up too high on on this. Uh, it's going just back uh, behind the neck. And then I can imagine that this kind of goes like that. Center line goes through here like this. And then, you know, with female characters, it's going to be uh, most of the time this upper region of the torso, the rib cage, is going to be thinner. Um, and then go a little wider down here to represent the hips and this can all be exaggerated for your character so I could I could go even um, smaller here If I wanted to shape my character a little differently I don't have to follow my reference my reference. I'm just using as a pose So let me just trim this. Come through here like this. And so then once I'm happy with how I've done my, my torso, then it's going to be a little easier to add everything else. So I've got um, a mark for where the belly button is. Whether we even see that or not, if she's going to be a clothed character, we may not even see that. Just by adding the center line, I've given it some some 3D life to it. It looks more three-dimensional. Um, going back to the last lesson, remember that this center line, I've got more space between here and here 
than I do between here and here, which tells the viewer, that gives us a visual clue that this torso is not looking straight at us, it's, it's facing more this way. And notice the hips um, aren't quite as extreme. The, the hips are getting closer to almost looking straight at us. Notice that this center line, the distance from here to here, is very close to here to here. And that's because the hips are, the pelvis region is, is almost facing us. And then the torso, the upper rib cage, is, is twisted and facing a little more downward. And this one's coming more at us. So this is a, this is a nice uh, dynamic pose. It's a very nice position for the torso. So just realize that these center lines serve a very important purpose. So pay attention to, to them and getting them in the right spots as best you can. I'm pretty happy with how I've done my basic head. Good side view. So now let's go to the thigh. I've got the knee in place. So I mentioned this in the last video. The bone, I'm not imagining the bone straight down the center of the leg. If here's the knee, uh, the, the femur, I tend to envision it a little more towards the top or the outside of the leg with a little bit more space on the inside, the inner thigh. So with that in mind, how I place this cylinder, I can start at the knee and just get my uh, width for the lower part and then just come straight up and out like this. So I can rough that in this way. And all I need to do is just bring it right up to the, the torso, to the pelvis region, and then just eyeball it. You know, see, see if I like it. Maybe I need to um, connect it a little differently. Maybe more like that. And that's all I'm going to do. And then for the knee area, you know, the knee is facing this way. It's not looking straight at us. So having that knee a little more towards the front, I think is good. And you know, again, if I just wanna ha save this region of the knee, save a spot for it, then just having a, a box right here to maintain that width. And then from here, Here's where I can tell I'm going to make this leg longer. Um, my knee is probably a little too low compared to this one. This upper thigh looks a little long, um, or it's possible that I made this lower leg too short. But either way, I can already see, because I like to have a nice long lower leg, and again, I'm gonna be a little fatter up top and just come down thin at the ankle, just like this. This is all I need to do, because again, I'm just working rough. I'm not focusing on my, any contours right now. I just want to get things in the right spot. So it's a little fatter up at the knee. The ankle is going to be a lot skinnier than, than this width here. And then I'm just making it just a little fatter up here in the upper three-quarter region. When I say three-quarter region, imagine we have a distance here. Here's halfway. Well, if we go, here's three-quarters, here's one-quarter. So right up here at the three-quarter area, that's what I'm thinking in my head when I'm thinking about where to make it widest at, uh, on the lower leg. So about three-quarters of the way up or you could think of it as a quarter of the way down from the knee. Uh, just make it a little fatter through there. And then I'm going to do my foot, again with as few lines as possible. Just paying attention to the direction that it's going. Uh, something like this I think is, is perfectly fine. 
and just pay attention to the size. Her feet are really tiny, which is fine. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger because one, I'm making her leg longer, and then I also feel like, you know, uh, making the feet um, a little bigger helps create a strong support for this character because there's a lot of mass going on up here. Um, I'm making her legs a little longer. Uh, if I give her little dainty feet, then I feel like that's going to make her base uh, weaker. She needs a little bit stronger support. So I try and make the feet match the character. Um, and another thing too, her foot looks super tiny here. Well, we're also dealing with a photograph. So whatever lens was being used on the camera, um, notice it, it, his foot here is really big. And then as his head is like really small compared to it, uh, that's because his head is going away from us. And the lens of the camera is probably exaggerating things that are closer and further away. So with the camera being up here, these things on her body are closer to the lens, whereas, you know, angled down, her foot's a little bit further away from the lens, so there's gonna be a little bit of distortion. So especially for comic characters, I don't rely on my reference material to give me all the information I need. I have to use some reasoning to uh, make decisions and, and change things that work for my character. So just trying to keep things nice and simple, uh, let's go to this other leg. Same thing. I'm thinking that here's the knee right here and the femur bone, the leg bone is going to be a l not dead center but more closer to the upper outer edge like this. So here's my stick figure uh, when I draw my cylinder I'm just going to draw a straight line, straight to the hip like this. Um, I like to draw a little bit. Her leg is going away from us a little bit, so rather than drawing this as a straight line, I like to use the, the idea of a cylinder and doing a little bit of an ellipse there or an arc, and that gives the sense that this is a cylinder, and because I curved it that way, that gives the impression that it's going away from us. And then I'm going to taper this and bring it right in here like this. And because the hips are looking almost directly at us, I can, I can use this center line and, and kind of guess where my connection points are for these cylinders. They're going to be very similar. The distance from the center line to here is gonna be similar to here. I wanna keep those pretty close. Uh, just so that it, it looks right. Um, so that's that helps me. That's why I chose to take it to right here. You know, if I had, I don't want to be haphazard about where I'm placing things. Um, yeah, I've got, you know, I've got a rough idea of where to put my, my cylinder, but if I bring it over here like this, well now this leg is passing the center line. That's not even right. That's physic. that's wrong. And then I don't want to be like too far in this way because now this is really close to the center line and this is really far away. So that doesn't look right. And plus it doesn't read right because now this thigh is very large, the width, and this one is very uh, small. So they need to be consistent. So these are things I'm, I'm keeping in mind uh, when, I, when I place these. So something more like that. Her knee is right here. I can see it right there. It's, it's facing down, like, it, I shouldn't say facing down. It's facing this way. So I'm, by me noting that, I'm not just gonna put the knee right here dead center and then do the leg like this, because now this is not pointing in the right direction. It's pointing more down. I need to notice that and put it in accordingly. So I'm just gonna do a circle or an ellipse right through here. You know, and sometimes it helps to put a, a center line on each of your shapes just to give the impression of where it's facing because that center line tells you where that shape is pointed at.
See how the distance here is much larger than here? That gives the impression that this knee is facing this way. Same with this one. This knee is now facing this way. It's going in this direction. You know, you can do the same on, your, on every body part. Put a center line to help you orient where all your elements are facing. You know, by adding these center lines, this, this tells me where the leg is positioned. And it's not the same as my stick figure. My stick figure is telling me basically where the bones are. The center lines on my cylinder shapes are telling me which direction they're facing. So on this thigh here, you know, clearly it's going to connect to the knee. The knee is the, the center. But this just helps clue me in on where all the parts are facing. So now going to this lower leg, I'm going to do a little arc for the uh, ankle. Notice it's very small, and then I'm just going to come up to the knee. Again, I can just do it like that. I don't necessarily need to make it fatter. Just creating a placeholder for body parts. I'm gonna do another center line there. And then the foot. Keeping it simple. Don't see a whole lot of the foot. Her foot is obscured behind this guy's shoulder. But I'm going to do just a point like this, almost like a, a, a mountain, that has a long side and a short side, like this. And then I can come back like this. And it's important that this is on the right side. If we think about a foot, our big toe is on the inside of our foot. So that's kind of what this is representing. This lets us know what, what, uh, what foot we're on. So if, if I were to draw this wrong, if I were to put it the short side here and the long side here, I've drawn this foot wrong because now I've put my big toe over on this side. So that's the whole reason for just having a long side and a short side like this. And that's only if it's noticeable, if that's going to be noticeable in your, um, your model, in your character. Because notice her other foot is, um, I could do it on this one as well, but it's not as noticeable because of the angle that the foot is at. So for me, I just, I have a line going this way, which designates which direction the foot is planted and facing. And then you can kind of see it here, like it's large and then it goes this way and then comes up like this. So I could do that, but to me this doesn't really read well. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it just, it, there's no reason for it. So I'm more concerned with the direction going this way and then coming back. But again, I'm not getting real, this isn't real detailed at this point. So I'm just trying to keep things simple. Uh, with here, I feel like it's real obvious we're looking at the top of the foot. So I'm just going to make a note that there's a long side and a short side. Maybe we'll just simplify this with a curve. The foot's curving in like that. All right. So then up to the arms, we've got this arm here, I'm just going to represent as a cylinder. I always do the upper arms as cylinders. I kind of think of them as shorter cylinders. They're, um, they're really not that short. You know, the upper arm is about the same length as the forearm, the lower arm here, but I kind of think, I always think of the upper arm as being the arm and the shoulder. So I kind of think of it as two parts.
And with that being said, that makes me think that the upper arm is, is, is shorter, but that's just my own thought process. So the, the forearm, very similar to the lower leg. It's thinner at the wrist. I'm going to do my, my, my ellipse this way. I had to actually look and realize that this is kind of coming at us like this. And it tapers down and gets thinner as it comes to the wrist. Maybe make that one a little, little thinner like that. And then this hand, um, it's hard to see what's going on. This isn't a very high resolution photo, but what's going on is we've got this, the flat part of the hand, which I'm just going to represent as like a box, like this. And then the thumb, the tip of the thumb is right there, you know, going into the palm. And then we've got the, you can see the pinky finger coming off like this. And then the other fingers are kind of overlapped like this. The knuckles are probably there. And then this is coming up like that. And then this is uh, going into the, uh, the forearm here. So um, I can draw it like this if I want, or I can just simplify it. The idea is just to, to get it in place and get the direction correct. So it's kind of, uh, well, it's actually going more up and down. So I've exaggerated it a bit here, um, which, is, which is fine. I feel like uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It maybe adds a little bit more dynamics to the pose. You know, and just keeping the fingers simple for now. Okay, and then over here, um, I have this mark for the shoulder that's way the heck out here, and so I'm wondering, um, because this arm, I'm just going to have the bone going through the center of the upper arm, and the center like this. And so the connection point should be roughly about in here, I think, and then this comes across here. So, I guess I'm kind of close. It just, it feels a little high. Maybe that whole arm needs to come down. And so, let me go into my, my stick figure pose. Let me just take this, lasso it, and uh, let me just bring it down a bit like this. And then go back to my other, using the cylinder again, the um, doing an ellipse in this direction because I want to give the sense that my cylinder is not looking right at us but it's tilting away from us just, just a bit. So that's why I say it's important to be able to draw a cylinder in any position and understand how to control it because then you're creating a uh, good, strong direction in all your elements. And then the wrist here, this one, I'm just going to draw a straight line there. Again, keeping the wrist tapered, much thinner at the wrist. So come out like that, just two straight lines may, may be all you need here. Uh, I'm just going to use this, this is a pretty good box shape. So I'm just going to do a box here, bring it out a little bit. Just as a placeholder for this hand. And let me go ahead and turn my stick figure off. So now that's a good fleshed out model right there. I got a little bit more to do. I don't have the neck in there yet. Um, this arm is just kind of floating. 
Let me show you where the clavicles go. So we've got the torso. There's our center line. The rib cage is coming up like this. I can see the bottom of her rib cage right here. It's coming up like this. So that's helping me know where the where these things go, where this is placed. So here's her rib cage. Right through here, I'm just going to draw a little area kind of where the neck will attach. Now, the rib cage comes up, and so you've got the, the sternum area right through here. You know, it's just, it's just this, this plate that sits right here. It's a narrow plate at your sternum, and these ends of the rib cage come up right to that sternum, like this. The clavicle is going to be, start from the center. It's going to come over here like this. And if you look at a shoulder, this shoulder, there's a line here and a line here. And it kind of comes over like this. Like I said, the shoulder is kind of like a shield. And it connects to that clavicle. That shoulder connects to that clavicle like that. So what you're looking for is... This goes up like this. Then there's a direction change right here on the shoulder and then there should be another direction change right here. You're looking for this direction change right there. That's going to tell you where your clavicle ends. So here it's a little tough to see but if you know what you're looking for, if you're actually looking for it, it's a little easier. So the, the deltoid, which is the shoulder muscle, it's long this way, right? And then this up here, up top, this is a little bit shorter. And you'll see this in shoulder muscles, on comic book characters, on photos. So if you know what you're looking for, this comes here, it's a little longer, this is a little shorter, and then it changes direction here. Where it changes direction is where that clavicle is coming around. That's where the clavicle is placed. And then it goes into your trapezius, your traps, like the, um, you know, up above by your neck, those big muscles. And that's going to come all the way around and go to the other side. And then the clavicle on this side is going to come around. This one, it's a lot harder to uh, know where it's at, but it's somewhere because I can see the shoulder here. Here's the long end. Here's the, the shorter end. This is at a little bit different angle, so and this is going to come over. But this clavicle is going to be somewhere over here. I've um, actually drawn this trap a little wrong. I should have drawn my clavicle first. So this is going to come around like this, and then the trapezius is going to connect just like that. It's just kind of a nice, even arc going from one point of the clavicle to the clavicle on the other side. And then the, the deltoid muscles are going to connect like this. And this one's going to come up like this. Okay? And then underneath this shoulder muscle, underneath this deltoid, there's a muscle that is coming out like this. This is the pectoralis major or the chest muscle and it's coming down and it is connecting to the rib cage like this. This is why when I do my roughs I like to put in this line right here. It's just above this apex, okay, right here. Now when I say apex, here's a line. This has no apex. Here's another line that switches direction and comes back this way. So it's going this way, and then all of a sudden it changes direction. Right here, this peak, that is what I call an apex. So what, what we've got here is the ribs come up and they 
Here's the apex right here, and then it comes back down. This is my clue. This is what I look for to help me place the pectoralis major, or the chest muscle line. And notice I kind of, I'm curving it around because I'm trying to keep everything three-dimensional and have shape and form. And so I, it's just above here. It's not right on it. It's just a little bit above. There's a little bit of space there. I know I'm drawing with a uh, pencil, so it's my lines are a little fatter. But if I were to clean this up a little bit, there's a little bit of space between that point and these muscles. Let me get my, my sternum out of the way here. So this is one muscle right here. It's a big chest muscle. And then here's the other one on the other side. And so this one comes here and it comes around the front of the rib cage and then it's connected all through here. So imagine this is all glued to the rib cage just like this. And then when it gets to the side here, um, kind of the front three quarter area, then it lifts off the rib cage and comes over and attaches to the arm. And it's going to do the same thing over here. It's going to come up like this. So these are the chest muscles here. This mark is important up here because I'm just going to imagine that this area up here on the, on the rib cage is, is like hollow, like I'm putting a hole right through here. And that's where I'm gonna connect the neck. And I can just do a straight line. Um, I'm looking at the base of the head, cause it kind of comes like this and then it kind of goes flat and then the jaw comes down. I'm looking at this point here. That's where I want to attach the neck. And I'm just gonna do a straight line from that point to the outside edge of this little opening here. Now, because I have this center line and I have this area marked out, I can say that my, my clavicle, my clavicles start right about there. I'm just gonna bring this one around. And then I'll bring this one around. Just a nice simple arc just like that. Again, just trying to keep everything simple, as simple as possible. And then from there, um, I'm going to connect right about here. I'm gonna say my, my shoulder comes up and let, I'm just going to draw a curve like this and I'll connect it like this. And then over here, I'm just going to do uh, a curve like this. And then if I want to, I can if I want to, just put in that trapezius, just connect them and draw through. Draw all the way through your drawing. So that way you know that your lines are on the right path. Because what happens a lot of times, you'll draw a line like this and then you'll draw a line like this. And sure, this reads fine. There's, not a, there's no problem here. But sometimes you'll get areas where you've drawn one one way and you've drawn one the other way. And if you imagine them connecting, they don't connect right. Because you didn't think of it as one continuous line. So sometimes it's helpful just to draw the whole thing like this, then you know it's correct. Then go back in and just erase the areas you can't see like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just erase this here. And let's erase this here, just to keep things simple and clean. Looks a little cleaner. Um, I wanna get that reference line to where the, the chest muscles sit. And I'm just kind of looking at it and making sure I've, I've, I've kind of got, maybe I got to angle it more this way. Because what I'm looking at, if we imagine these, uh, 
these these lines you know these curves that are kind of representing the curveness of cylinder forms everything's kind of curving this way if we think of like a cylinder that's curving let me just draw a cylinder real quick that's curving Notice that this arc down here is like this, and this one up here is like this. So this one, if we look at the apex of that arc, this one is more here, this one is more here. So what happens is the one in the middle is going to be halfway between those, right? It's not going to be like this, facing this way or this way. It's going to be somewhere, it's going to be facing in between them. So instead it's somewhere between this angle and this angle, so it'll be facing more like this. Actually, more like this, I think. Yeah, kind of like that. So each one of those in between is going to be a little bit in between the other one. So basically, as these arcs go down the form, the angles uh, that they're facing, the apexes are going to be facing a little bit more each way until it gets uh, to this last one, which is facing that way. And so that's what I'm thinking about here when I'm uh, plotting this line. What, what I was doing is I've got this line up here, down here we're going like this, and down here we're going like this. So when I place this line right here, that's what I was thinking about. I want to make sure that it's not going this way because that's violating the direction that these two are establishing. It's got to be somewhere in between those two. It's not going to be going this way. Again, that's, that's not consistent with the form. So it's got to be somewhere between these two. And so that's why I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out how I was going to put that in. I can just draw a straight line from here to here. You know, about the, about the center of this shoulder. Just draw a straight line from there to there. And then same on this side. It comes over and it's just going to come up to about like that. So that's that's probably a little bit more advanced. Obviously, I got into a little bit of anatomy there. Um, you don't have to go this advanced, but I figure if I just, if I give you a little bit of more advanced stuff each time, it'll keep you, keep you interested in, in, in wanting to learn a little more, a little more each time. So just looking at this, um, I don't like this area. <laughs> like, this, is, this just doesn't look good. I kind of think this whole arm, let's just take, I'm going to take this whole arm and bring it down like this. So after I went through all that, I just, I kind of feel like, well, maybe that, that was maybe just a little too much. Maybe we don't, maybe it wasn't a good idea to, to really incorporate this at this stage into the characters. Maybe it's better just to keep it simple. I feel like I, I was going a little more than I needed to. So to keep things simple, let's just take it back a notch. Let's take it back a little bit. I think that was good information to know, but let's not incorporate that right now. Let's just keep, um, let's not even worry about the clavicle. So kind of like the kneecaps, I'm just doing uh, something similar for the shoulders. Center line 
through there like that. Yeah, so that works for me. And then um, I didn't get, uh, I'm gonna kind of halfway between the top of the head and the jaw. Let me get a, uh, a guideline in there for where the eyes are gonna sit. Like that. Um, kind of a side view. So I don't necessarily have to do a, a center line going vertically. I'm just gonna stick with a side view on this one. Notice the angle of the ear. Angles of the ear. Um, I used to draw my ears pretty straight up and down uh, when I was younger and never thought anything of it. But the more I started you know, studying anatomy and whatnot, here's her jawline. The ear is really angled. Like it's got an extreme angle. So um, jawline, ear needs to be angled back pretty far. So little tips here and there. Don't go up and don't go straight up and down like this. And when I say straight up and down, basically this is like an ellipse, right? If we have an ellipse and this is the major axis this way, the angle of that major axis shouldn't be more straight up and down. It needs to be more angled, you know, more like a 45 degree angle. I have that jaw going back pretty far too, so maybe I'll adjust that. But yeah, so when I put in that ear, even just having a little guideline like that, um, eyebrows will be up a little higher, so. So maybe I'll just put in just a little placeholder right there for the ear. And then if I, I can add whatever information I want to this to help me, you know, I can, again, put in, in some more guidelines for the shape of this, of these uh, cylinders, if this, if this is going to be helpful, you know, putting in a light guide for where those chest muscles are going to sit. If I do feel like I need the um, rib cage, you know, I may not need it at this step. Maybe that's for the next step. Maybe I don't need it at all. Maybe the clothing she's wearing is, um, obscures this area to where I don't need this information in there. So I may not necessarily need that. So I don't have to put it in if I don't need it. But all I am doing is evolving my character, slowly taking it to um, a finish. And I want my finish to be as good as I can get it. So to help me get it as good as I can get it, following these steps is very helpful. And eventually the better you get at this stuff, the better you, you know, the, the better you get at recognizing these things, eventually you may not have to use these guides. Eventually you could get to the point where you, if this is step one, stick figure, this is step two, blocking it in with, with cylinders and shapes, you know, eventually you could get to the point where you're so good, you get so good at these steps that you can get to where you can skip these steps. You know, you could skip step one and step two and go right into, you know, roughing in your character um, without even going through these steps. But it's kind of like the phrase, you gotta walk before you can run. You gotta crawl before you can walk. Once you, if you, if you can't run yet, if you can't start at step three, if you're just not there, if that's beyond your skill level, well, how do you get to step three? Well, start with step one and step two. Focus on these fundamentals, and then that's going to help you get to step three. And then eventually, you could get so good at those to where you don't need step one anymore. You could probably step, start with step two. Or, you know, you could go the rest of your life. Uh, this is how you create all your characters. You always go from step one, step two, step three. There's no, there's no right or wrong way. It's just finding out 
uh, what is efficient, what works well for you. Next video, I'll go into like doing uh, some contours, taking it a step further. And then, uh, you know, after that, uh, I'll go ahead and ink it and paint it. I'll go over some ideas that you can think about for establishing light and creating uh, some interest in your artwork. All right.